A Little Sacrifice, written by Santa Tanvir, read by Chuck Brown. Fred put on his worn-out shoes, the ones where his toes were peeping out. Snow had been falling outside for the past few hours. This morning, on his way to school, the cold was not bothering him, but he was thinking about Laura. Next week, the winter holidays would start. This year, he had resolved to spend the Christmas holidays at Laura's home in Neverland. Laura and Fred were childhood friends. Two years earlier, Laura's father had gotten transferred to Neverland, and so he had moved his whole family there. Since that time, Fred and Laura had both written letters to each other, just to stay in contact. They wished they could see each other as well, but they couldn't due to the distance between them and financial constraints. But this year, Fred was eager to visit Laura at any cost. Suddenly, Fred heard an announcement. Big prize! Big prize! Enter to win a ticket to Neverland for just 50 cents. Hurry, participate in the lucky ticket drawing today. A ticket to Neverland, Fred said to himself with excitement. All day long in school, he thought about that ticket. As the final bell rang, signaling the end of the last period, he rushed toward his home. He went quickly to his room which was actually the only room for the whole family, and searched for his money bag. He threw it forcefully to the floor to break it open and started counting the coins. Altogether, there was exactly 50 cents. Suddenly, his grandpa walked into the room. What are you doing, young man? Grandpa asked. I am going to buy a ticket to Neverland, Fred replied. With fifty cents? Grandpa asked with astonishment. I am entering a drawing with this fifty cents and hope to win a ticket to Neverland, Fred told Grandpa. But this is all your savings, Grandpa said. I know, Grandpa, but this is the only chance I have to see Laura this Christmas. Grandpa sat down on the floor near Fred and kindly said to him, you know, it is winter, and Christmas is near, too. You must spend this money wisely. You can buy your new school shoes or give them to someone in need. Remember, if you will help others, you will be rewarded, too. But, Grandpa, fifty cents is not enough to buy a new pair of shoes. Also, there are thousands of people out there who can help the needy. Fred said, selfishly. This is my only chance to see Laura. I want to try my luck. Grandpa didn't say anything else. Fred went to the shop and purchased the ticket. He waited impatiently for the result of the drawing that would be announced tomorrow. The next day, he skipped school and went to the shop. In the afternoon, three winners were announced. A farmer won the first ticket, a teacher won the second one, and now it was time for the third lucky winner. Fred closed his eyes and prayed wholeheartedly. The third ticket goes to Fred, the voice announced. Fred jumped with excitement. He was so happy that finally his wish was going to come true and he would get to see Lara this time. He wanted to get home as soon as possible to start packing. On his way back home, a beggar woman approached him. She was asking for money. As Fred had no money left, he ignored her. She asked him to give her some money and help her to get back to her two-year-old child who was in the hospital in Neverland. She wanted to see him and be there for him, but she could not afford the ticket. If you help me, you will get something special, the woman told Fred. But I have my special thing. Now I don't need anything else, 
Fred said to her, and ignored her rudely once again. That night, Fred was on cloud nine. He was happy that finally he could see Laura. But something was bothering him. He felt restless. This anxiety grew worse as time passed. His mind kept returning to that beggar woman who was badly in need of a ticket. She so desperately wanted to see her son, just as much as he wanted to see Lara. But there was a striking difference between that woman and Fred. Her son was very ill, and she was unable to be with him for support and comfort. That whole night, Fred remained restless. The next morning, on his way to school, he again saw that lady begging for help. He walked up to her and gave her the ticket. She was so overwhelmed, she started crying and prayed out loud for Fred. A wave of warmth swept across his entire body as she prayed, and he felt so strongly that he had done the right thing. But now, Fred was empty-handed, with no money and no ticket. He felt sad because he couldn't visit Laura's house again this year. But he was also happy that the lady would be able to see her young child. She needed that ticket more than I did, he thought. He wanted to let Lara know that he would not be coming to visit this year, so he sat down to write a letter to her. As he walked up to the mailbox to drop the letter in, he saw another letter on the ground. He thought that someone had mistakenly dropped that letter instead of slipping it into the mailbox, so he picked it up and was about to drop it in the slot with his letter. But looking more closely, he saw no stamps on that letter. In fact, it was just a piece of paper. He unfolded it and discovered that it was actually a sort of map. Strange dots and crosses were marked on it. At first, he could not understand what he was seeing. But after a time, he noticed that it showed a place in the forest near his home. It was like a treasure map. He decided it was something silly that someone had made as part of a game, and he threw it back down on the ground. But then he thought twice about it. Being a curious boy, Fred decided that it might be fun or interesting to follow the map and see where it led him. He headed home for a change of clothes and then headed off to the forest toward the spot shown on the map. He was a tiny bit afraid, since he had never been this far into the forest before. It was so quiet in there among the thick trees. He saw no signs of animals. He kept following the map until he had walked miles. Suddenly, he heard someone whispering. Hello, who's there? Fred called out and his voice echoed in the forest. He saw a little girl hiding behind bushes. He went over to her. Who are you? Fred asked. But the little girl was so frightened, she could not utter a single word. Suddenly, a fairy appeared out of nowhere and said, She is afraid of the giant king who has kidnapped her parents. Who are you? Fred asked astonished. I am a forest fairy, and she is my friend Dorothy, and she lives here in the forest. Fred showed her the map. Oh, so you live here. Can you please guide me to this place? This is the way to that cruel king's palace. That last place shown on the map is the king's bedroom, the fairy told him. Can you take me there? Fred asked. Yes, but only if you promise to help us, said the fairy. How can I help you? Fred asked. You have to go to the palace and set Dorothy's parents free from the imprisonment of that giant by killing him. 
What? You want to kill your king? Fred asked, confused. He is not our king. He is the king of no one here. We lived here happily for ages. We were free to go anywhere we wanted without any fear. Then one day this cruel giant invaded our land and took it over and declared himself king. He took our grown-ups and made them prisoners in his palace. He also took away our fairy's magical powers and left us all helpless, Dorothy said. If he is that powerful, then how can I help you? I have no superpowers. I'm just a boy who lives a simple life outside this forest. But the giant king cannot harm you, because you do not belong to this forest. You are not a part of it. He won't even be able to see you, said the forest fairy. Fred breathed a sigh of relief. Oh, then that might be an easy task. But he can smell you, the fairy added. Fred became scared again. Don't worry, we will help you and guide you. You just have to steal the king's crown, as all his powers lie in that crown. Steal it and destroy it. That's all you need to do, said the fairy. Also, this map will help you to reach your final destination. Maybe you will even find some treasure there, Dorothy said with a spark of excitement. Well, let's get started. I, I have to get back home soon, said Fred. They all went toward the palace, which was in the middle of a lake. To sneak Fred into the palace, the fairy found and brought him a guard's uniform. Fred put on the uniform and easily slipped into the palace. The forest fairy and Dorothy stayed outside, since they could be easily caught by the king. Fred quietly climbed the stairs to the king's bedroom. The giant king was asleep there in his bedroom. Fred searched for the crown until he found it on a shelf. He picked up the crown and started to sneak away, but suddenly the giant king woke up. He smelled the presence of Fred inside the room. He rushed toward the crown to grab it away, but he was too late, as just as he did with his piggy bank, Fred broke it into pieces by throwing it hard to the floor. A scream echoed in the palace, and the giant king turned to ashes within seconds right in front of Fred. Before leaving, Fred remembered the map, which he opened to find the exact location of the final destination. According to the map, it was the very center of the bedroom but there was nothing there in the center of the room. Dig up the floor of this area, Fred heard the fairy's voice saying to him. He looked up in surprise. How did you get in here? he asked. I heard the scream and knew that you had killed the giant king. Now I am here to see that you get your reward, said the fairy. So Fred dug up the floor in the center of the bedroom and found a large box there. He bent down and opened the box. It was full of precious jewels. This is all yours now, the fairy said. Did you already know about this? Fred asked. Yes, I knew about it, and I was the one who placed that map near the mailbox so that someone courageous like you would find it and help us to get rid of the giant king. This is the reward for your bravery, said the fairy. Fred picked up the box and headed down to the dungeon where he found Dorothy's parents and released them. On his way home, he was happy as he realized that he could now buy his new school shoes, his grandpa would get warm clothes this winter, and he could easily visit Lara's home. After the long trip back, it was nighttime as he entered the house, and there was darkness everywhere. It seemed as if the power had been cut off. 
is anyone home? Fred called out. Surprise! His whole family shouted together. The whole house lit up, and it was decorated with colorful fairy lights. Fred was so surprised to see all this. What's so special about today? Fred asked. There's something special for you in your room, they told him. As he went into his room, his feet froze in place. He was shocked and unable to speak even a single word. Laura was standing right there, right in front of him. I have decided that I will spend this Christmas with you, Laura said to him. Fred was simply amazed, and he didn't know what to say. He was unable to believe that with a little sacrifice of a 50-cent ticket, he ended up with so many rewards. The End